Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is an Answering Questions episode, so let's get right to it, even though we have one question today. And it's a good one. Brendan from Morris, New York. Do you think we will ever find abilisaurids in North America, Australia, and Antarctica? Well, Brendan, let's actually take a look at the geographical uh, location of where um, abilisaurid fossils have been found. Abilisaurid fossils have been actually found in South America, uh, Southern Africa, uh, Madagascar, India, and ba basically those are the mostly the best places to find abelisaurids. Now when we actually look at uh, places like Australia and Antarctica, they're right in that range, but even though I think I think abelis and maybe there could be an abelisaurid could be found, but even though it's really hard to actually find out find out if there really are uh, fossil remains that could be found in Australia. Uh, Antarctica is almost the same way, but even though we would have to find uh, rocks that actually date back into the, into the Cretaceous. Now I do believe there is Cretaceous uh, uh, sedimentary rocks in Antarctica, but we, ha we have to like like dig through like a bunch of ice and pretty much uh, the best places to go. The best place to go is during the summer months uh, in in Antarctica to actually find some of those places. But even though it's really hard to find out, in the but basically, when most of the are actually found in the southern hemisphere, they haven't been really found in the northern hemisphere. I mean, there has been like uh, speculation, like maybe there's like some abelisaurids that made it. Up. There's like some abelisaurids made it to Europe. But they're very rare. But I would say that um, guys like in uh, Planet and Di Dinosaur Planet, uh, you actually saw um, that one episode of basically a raptor, tra a raptor's travels, basically, where pretty much is that he that this raptor lived on the, like a larger island where basically it had larger dinosaurs, but it was the, one of the smallest dinosaurs in its environment. But then when it got cast off to um, uh, another island where basically it was all like pygmy dinosaurs and pretty much the same carnivores that were actually on the bigger island uh, were actually uh, dwarf uh, versions of it. But even though I would actually say that the Tarascosaurus that has actually been known to be that is supposedly in Europe, um, I'm still not sure if this was an abelisaurid. Now, there are some scientists that say it is, and some scientists say it isn't. So, I mean, it's still up in the air whether or not Tarascosaurus is actually uh, an abelisaurid. Some say it is, but even though the jury's still out. But if we, but even though in North America, it's going to be hard for abelisaurids to actually get there. Because, you see, the only way that this could actually happen is basically if their ancestors that were actually uh, from the Triassic that was around during the Pangaea uh, times, it would actually, their relatives would actually have to be pushed towards the northern continents, which is basically uh, North America, Europe, and Asia. So pretty much, you're actually not looking at a very rich diversity of abelisaurids. Now, ceratosaurs are kind of close relatives of abelisaurids. Uh, they kind of actually are not really uh, in that spectrum, see ceratosaurs went it, see ceratosaurs went extinct right around uh, the early Cretaceous. So pretty much, they really didn't survive very long after the Jurassic. And so, I would say it's not, it's going to be hard to find out if there is going to be abelisaur that's going to be found in North America. Could there? Could it be possible? Yeah, it could be. But even though they would actually be very very rare, and I would. And I would say they were probably the small, they're probably the small, probably medium sized uh, uh, theropods during that time. It's because you had uh, the uh, basal carcarodontosaurids, and also you actually had the tyrannosaurs that were actually starting to develop. But you see, if there were some that were around in the, in the late Cretaceous, it would not be the top predators. They would not be top predators. They would actually be mainly probably scavengers. Uh, to the Tyrannosaurs, and so that would actually be uh, kind of what could have actually happened. Could it be possible? Yes, but even though the geographic location of 
uh, abelosaurid fossils just don't match uh, to the northern hemisphere because the tyrannosaurs dominated the northern hemisphere whereas abelosaurids actually dominated the southern hemisphere and so that actually kind of kind of puts things into perspective of basically the geographic locations of of some of these animals is because you see sometimes because you see if you I would say if you put an abelosaurid uh, in North America uh, I would actually say that it probably wouldn't last very long because you see if it actually came up a came up across a tyrannosaur to compete against to compete for food a tyrannosaur would actually just dominate it uh, without a doubt it's just because first and foremost the tyrannosaur is a little bit small is, is, is a bit smarter and also it's bigger it has more mass and it could actually uh, and also has bigger weapons it has bigger weapons than the bilosaurids the bilosaurids they have these puny arms tyrannosaurs do actually have puny arms but not as small as the bilosaurids and so a bilosaurids wouldn't be able to grab anything and also uh, their skulls were pretty much used for brute force pretty much uh, so I wouldn't be surprised they used headbutting as a weapon basically just uh, basic headbutting and sometimes use their horns uh, to actually uh, do some damage but their teeth wouldn't do too much damage their bite force could be close to actually killing a tyrannosaur but the muscle mass of a tyrannosaur is just so huge that pretty much that a bilosaur couldn't actually make a killing blow uh, to a tyrannosaur the only way it could do that is if basically if a tyrann if it gets the tyrannosaur on the ground then pretty much uh, goes right for the throat then bites the throat then basically that's it but with tyrannosaurs they're they're so heavily massive they would actually have the balance needed to actually take down the bilosaur and almost the same way in Europe but even though back then Europe was just a bunch of scattered islands uh, so I would actually say that's if there were some abelosaurids up there there could be probably smaller one probably probably small ones not as big as the ones on the southern hemisphere southern hemisphere like carnotaurus or uh abelosaurus you know those types of dinosaurs or even acosaurus or scorpio venator but you see majungasaurus would actually be kind of almost considered to be a dwarf uh abelisaurid or otherwise medium-sized abelisaurid it's because basically it's only found in madagascar so that could be that could be an answer to your question is basically uh i would say it could be possible to find abelisaurids in the northern hemisphere and also in um uh, and australia and antarctica but it's pretty much it's pretty much uh what pretty much one million to one to actually find one and so pretty much very very rare chances of actually finding it and I mean in paleontology how often are you gonna find a new species um, almost you know, pretty much when you're actually searching the, the badlands and also the sedimentary rocks that you're looking for to find a, a new species sometimes you just run into the species that you usually find and the in those kind of locations that's how it is all right that's it for now now next week will actually be a special episode so if you actually got a dinosaur or a prehistoric mammal a marine reptile a shark or otherwise uh, maybe a permian uh, animal um, basically vertebrates uh, just basically vertebrates even if also added another pterosaur if you like because uh, I did a pterosaur uh, last week and also a marine reptile last week so that was kind of pretty cool that was kind of fun but anyway if you got a dinosaur or any other prehistoric animal that you want me to talk about feel free to email it to me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise you could go on the links that I actually have on my Facebook page prehistoric facts with Dino Chris uh, like the page you can actually find uh, some posts that I actually have uh, links to dinosaur names and look over the ones that I haven't done yet and uh, and I can actually talk about the which one talk about which ones you want me to talk about and also you can still send me questions uh, anytime by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise go on my Facebook page prehistoric facts with Dino Chris like the page you can actually post your questions in the comment section on any Facebook post but remember keep your questions short and to the point also you can follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL 
That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of people around you. And also, for your younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. So, so the best motivation you can have for a good education. It's very important to have a good education. So, with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys next week.